Okay. So my name is Karl-Heinz Brandenburg and I titled this presentation Why? Why ask why? <laughs> okay. I remember okay, some decades ago as children we used to ask why as well for everything around and since Innovations are driven by inventions, and these again are driven by curiosity. We really need to stay like children in that way, to continue asking why, to continue to find out new ways to do things. In fact, that's the normal work for engineers, and I started out as an engineer, uh, today, I wouldn't be so sure what my job description should be uh, because on one hand I'm teaching at the university, on the other hand uh, I'm uh, heading a Fraunhofer Institute, which means including students, some hundred people, so uh, I'm happy if I'm still able to ask the right questions <coughs> to my people and uh, stay that way. Um, in a state of mind which is uh, good for them and good for me. Anyway, if something doesn't work, find out why. Uh, that's what we have to do as engineers. But to the why is another question. Why was I chosen as an ambassador for this European Year of Creativity and Innovation? Um, I assume that has to do with what I've done in the past, so I will talk a little bit about the past. In fact, I was asked to uh, talk about the history of MP3, and in some way for me it still feels like a fairy tale. So, once upon a time, okay, what do you think, how long ago? Uh, it's really several decades. So, uh, it's called invention, people call people inventors, and if you look for patent laws what an invention is, uh, you find as a criterion uh, it's a new and in some way surprising answer to a question, to a problem, you find out how to do things. And so I was the lucky guy to prove that my professor some 30 years ago was right and the patent examiner had no idea what he was saying, this is impossible. <laughs> uh, and since then, of course, we had to work for a long time. I'll tell you a bit about the story. And now everybody thinks I can tell them how to do the same again. I'm not so sure, but I will try. Anyway, why the success of MP3? I'll start with the end with uh, some journalists, as many writing about the story. Uh, that was an interview a couple of years ago, and uh, his notion was, he wrote about myself, but I always say no, this was a team. So key factors for the success of the Erlangen team have been vision, overtime effort, and stubbornness. Mm. That's different ways to rephrase uh, what uh, she just told mm. you. Uh, vision means you have to have a view of the future. You have to have ideas which are beyond the normal borders of looking into things. Overtime effort, uh, we should not think that all that is easy. I think the children put a lot of time into their drawings as well. For them this was overtime effort as well and certainly for the team in Erlangen it was. Stubbornness, I would say it a little bit different. I don't like this word too much. Uh, it's better keep going. Keep going even if things seem not to work. And the fourth, he didn't mention you always need luck as well. There's always competition and you 
need the comp competitors uh, to be not as good as you are or not have the right ideas. So again, let's go back nearly 30 years ago. In fact, even a couple of years earlier, uh, Professor Seitzer, together with a colleague, did a patent application saying we should use this, at that time, new integrated services digital network system to transmit music over foreign lines and have services to transmit music to customers over phone lines. Today we all do that. At that time the answer of the patent examiner was, it's very clear according to the state of the art, it's not possible to get anything like enough audio quality at the bit rates of ISDN. <coughs> no high fidelity music at 128 kilobit per second. In fact, at that time, digital processing of media signals already was a research topic and was in use for some applications. People were already using it uh, to get more phone calls over the lines and people were actively doing research on coding of pictures and video. High quality audio at that time, everybody agreed, is not possible. On the other hand, people in the early to mid 80s thought of digital audio broadcast, for example, that we should go digital uh, with radio. Uh, that's still going on, much slower than people thought at the time. But again, that brought a lot of public research money to the people doing research on that. So that way we started to do research in Erlangen in the early 80s, uh, my PhD work, for example, and at the, at that time, newly founded Fraunhofer Institute for Integrated Circuits in Erlangen, and in fact, other places. So if you ask some other people, you will get a slightly different view of the whole story. It's always some more people who work on this. Anyway, we had a great team. And this is a picture from 87, uh, commemorating this box uh, on the right. Uh, that was the first box ever who could take a signal directly from a CD, compress it to about the bit rates we nowadays use on our MP3 players, iPods and so on, and decode it again and listen to it. That was 22 years ago. And in fact, that has most of the core team. There's one, Dr. Harry, who uh, is still that, that he's not on that picture because he joins the team only a year later. <coughs> and in fact, what's, I think, already showing uh, what went on, uh, we stayed together. If you look at that picture, it has two heads of Fraunhofer Institutes, Professor Ger Gerhäuser in the front and myself four department heads, so basically every, not only state, but had a career within Fraunhofer as well. Okay, so early work, but uh, that of course didn't solve anything, uh, and just uh, scientific curiosity. And a lot of people were doing similar work at that time, late 80s, and in fact, there was standardization. That's the Moving Pictures Experts Group, the standards we use for digital TV all the time nowadays. And they started in 88 soliciting proposals for video compression to fit on a compact disc. And I already do a joke on that. It took them only a couple of months to find out that on CD, normally all the data space is taken up by the music. So if you want to put video on it, there's no space left for the music, but music, uh, movies without sound are really out of fashion. So they needed some audio compression as well. 